energy from the sun comes down to Earth. So we have the sun up here, and then we have the Earth. And so the energy is coming down to Earth. And about 30% of that energy is reflected back into space. And so only 70% of that initial energy actually makes it to Earth. Now, of that 70% that makes it to Earth, about one-third of it is absorbed by clouds. And so it's only about two-thirds of it that makes it to Earth. That's supposed to be a bush, by the way. And so of all that that's making it to the Earth, less than 1% of that energy is available to be used by plants and other primary producers of photosynthesis. Now, of that solar energy that is available to them to be used, 90% of that is lost as heat. And so there's only about 1% that can be used to produce sugars. Now, animals that consume plants, maybe that's a herbivore, maybe an omnivore, that animal can only use 1% of the energy from plants they consume. So we have these animals eating plants, and then we have predators that feed on primary consumers and decomposers. So we have animals that are eating the animals that are eating the plants. And so of those predators feeding on primary consumers and decomposers, they can only absorb and use about 1% of the energy they take in. And so if I went through that kind of quickly, let me just go over it again. We have all that energy coming from the sun. 30% is directly reflected back into space. 70% of it makes it to Earth. It makes it to the Earth's surface of land and water. And on the Earth's surface, it drives weather patterns and ocean currents. Now, most of that energy is ultimately radiated back into space, so only less than 1% is available to use, be used by plants. Now, of that 1%, 90% is lost as heat, and so only 1% can be used to produce sugars. And of that 1%, animals only use 1% of the energy from plants they consume, and the predators feeding on those primary consumers and decomposers can only absorb and use 1% of the energy they take in. So the number of steps in this chain must be limited for there to be sufficient solar energy to sustain life. 